back to America's most powerful talk lineup, WHIO. All right, it's the time. Can we get the show on the road? I've been waiting for it all day. And not a moment too soon. Listen to talk radio. This guy, Todd. Monday through Friday. Five to seven. He's weird. Best thing on the radio. It's the Evening Edge with Todd Holst. Call me now, 937-457-1290. Locally grown, seriously funny on WHIO. Now, you just saying you want to have fun, or do you really want to have fun? It is the Evening Edge, Monday through Friday, 5 to 7. We made it to Friday. Woohoo! Woohoo! Anyway, Woo-hoo! there you go. Thank you. Uh, we got the live stream up and running. We're on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. If you'd like to watch... Last night, somebody on the live stream said watching makes the show funnier. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm funny looking. I always thought I had a face for radio. But, oh, well, you know, my producer is like shaking or nodding and saying, yeah, I agree. But uh, whatever. It's up there on the live stream for all the world to see. Uh, tonight on the show, we have uh, we have a couple of things. This is uh, this is interesting. Uh, I got a um, a message from Clinton, who uh, is a big time edge head, lives up in Piqua, and he sent me a uh, a link to a story. And I thought, well, my gosh, this would be a uh, a good topic, I think. And um, you can either call in. I would love for you to call in nine three seven four five seven twelve ninety. Or you can uh, hop on my Facebook and cast your vote. I put a poll up there. Uh, On Wednesday, this past Wednesday, uh, your governor and mine, Mike DeWine, um, he he gave the state of the state address, which is a little redundant. State of the state. I get it, but state of the state. State of Ohio's address, maybe. I don't know. Either way. Um, one One of the elements in his speech was he was talking about cell phones in schools. And I think this could be sort of a hot-button topic for many parents. Um, He says, this is what the governor says, is that uh, he is all in favor of the elimination of cell phone use during the school day. Absolutely zero cell phone use by students from the beginning of school to the end of school. Uh, I don't know that he goes as far and and says uh, a ban of cell phones, like you can't bring them to school. I don't think he's saying that. I don't think he's saying you you have to leave them in your locker. Maybe he is, I don't know. Or leave them in your car if you're one of the few teenagers that drives. Um. But uh, but he says that uh, he's in favor of getting rid of cell phones in schools. Um, you know, some cell phone uh, rules across Ohio, they, they kind of vary from district to district. Some schools, they've banned cell phones. Others have not. Uh, lots of times it's left up to the teachers whether the the students can have their cell phones out in class on the desk or not. It really depends, I guess, where you might be. Um, DeWine says school officials and teachers alike agree that phones are distracting in the classroom and negatively impact a child's mental health. When I saw that, uh, I thought I saw that quote or that line in the story. I thought mental health. I guess from the social media aspect of it, right? Sure. If kids are constantly looking at their uh, Instagram or their uh, TikTok or whatever, you know, whatever, whatever the hot platform is now for teenagers, I guess that could be certainly uh, taxing on their mental health, of course. But. Uh, Putting that aside, I don't know if just having a cell phone is going to make you uh, experience mental health issues. Maybe. I don't, I'm not a doctor. Um, currently, there's no statewide restriction on cell phone use in Ohio, but a representative from Centerville 
has submitted a bill that would prohibit the use of cell phones during class with medical and instructional exceptions. Um, obviously medical, I guess. Uh, if you have uh, some uh, sort of medical issue, you're a teenager and you have a medical issue, maybe having your cell phone with you uh, could be life savings, especially if you have to call 911 or somebody near you has to call 911. Or maybe you have an app on your on your phone that uh, keeps track of, uh, you know, some sort of biometric reading on your body. I, I don't know. Uh, instructional exceptions. I don't know what that would be. Calculator on your phone, maybe. Uh, or maybe there's a video that the teacher wants everybody to pull up. I'm not sure. I know some schools have uh, iPads and, uh, you know, uh, classes are conducted and, you uh, Discussions are, you know, take place uh, through different things on an iPad. So I'm, I'm just curious what people think about this. I think it might also be very generational. I think older folks, and I would throw myself into that uh, that bundle. Uh, I'm 54. Uh, my son didn't have a cell phone. I think he until he was in high school. But again, you know, this was a, this was a long time ago, and cell phones. Well, I, not that long ago. I mean, maybe 10, 12 years ago. But cell phones at that time were not uh, smartphones like they are now. I mean, maybe the very, very early iPhones, but uh, most kids just had a regular cell phone that uh, you could play Centipede on, and that was it. At least that was my son's uh, experience. Um, so, I, you know, I'm, I'm sort of thinking, well, I didn't have a cell phone growing up. If uh, if I needed to call my parents, I just went to either the payphone in the main lobby or I went to the office and said, hey, I need to call my uh, my mom and let her know that I wet myself and she needs to bring me some dry clothes. They got tired of me in the senior uh, office calling all the time. They just get, said, you can't come in here anymore. No, I'm kidding. But you know my point. You would go to the office. And if the if the parent had to get a message to their student or their, their child, they would call the school and say, hey, I need to give a, a, a message to my my child that, uh, you know, the doctor's appointment was canceled. I'm not picking you up today or whatever it is. But I also think, though, that younger generations, maybe, you know, parents who are in their 30s, maybe early 40s, um, who've spent uh, or even 20s for that matter. Who, who've spent most of their life with a cell phone in their hand, maybe they would think differently. You know, the other thing I was thinking about is how often we hear of uh, situations at schools, and unfortunately, lots of times they're school shootings, and kids are calling their parents or kids are calling the police, and they're trying to get help or they're trying to let them know what's going on, whatever the case might be. Um, you know, we didn't have that luxury when I was in school, but then again, we didn't have the number of incidents at school like we have now. So I don't know that you can make that comparison because I've made that comparison before. It's like, well, I didn't have to, you know, we didn't have cell phones. Everything seemed fine. Well, you know, we weren't having school shootings every week in this country. So I don't know. Maybe parents feel differently about it. Also, I think kids are much more busier now in their lives than, uh, than I was and, and other maybe older generations. You know, I played one sport, uh, at a time, maybe I was involved in scouts, but that was about it. You know, I talk to parents now who have kids in high school and they're playing sports. They're taking, uh, music lessons. They're taking dance. They're taking tutoring They're You know, they've got jobs, some of them, uh, you know, they, they have a lot of stuff going on and it would be nice for parents to be able to reach their kids and vice versa without having to go through, you know, somebody at the school's office or whatever it might be. Um, I put this up there on my uh, on my Facebook page, the poll asking if you support this idea of banning essentially, you know, banning cell phones from uh, from school during the day. And I'm surprised. 70% say yes. 
And I, you know, I don't know what the ages are of these people, but again, I wonder if this falls down, you know, kind of in a generational sort of gap or difference. The other thing that I uh, was thinking about with this is that if they're going to ban cell phones in schools for kids, what about teachers? Because, you know, many teachers are active on social media. And I would imagine that there might be times during the day in a classroom where if uh, students are taking a test or students are quietly working on an assignment or they're reading or whatever, you know, they're supposed to be doing in the classroom, that the teacher probably, you know, well, I'll open that drawer, pull out the phone, you know, check my Tinder, <laughs> check my check my messages, our thing, you know, whatever it is. Should they also be barred from using cell phones? Because that could be just as much of a distraction for them as it is the uh, the kids. I think you could make that argument. So I'd be curious to know what your uh, thoughts are on, are on that. 937-457-1290. Uh, the other uh, big controversy, <laughs> I wouldn't really call it a controversy, but I know that a lot of folks who listen to this show because it's come up on the, on the, uh, on the show before enjoy the wheel of fortune. Now the wheel of fortune of course has been on for what a hundred years and Pat Sajak has been the host the whole time. He's finally retiring. And I saw that he uh, recorded his last show earlier this week. And I think it's going to be on sometime in June, if I'm not mistaken. But there was a uh, there's a controversy brewing about a puzzle that was uh, featured on Wednesday night show. And a lot of people online are upset about this. And I'd be curious to get your take on this as well. Uh, the, the woman who made it to the bonus round, she had a chance of winning one hundred thousand dollars. I guess she uh, I don't know, whatever, she, whatever the deal is now, uh, they she could win one hundred thousand dollars. And you, if you remember, if you, I'm, everybody's watched the show at some point, they give you the category of what the puzzle is, right? They don't obviously give you the letters, they give you the category. So you start thinking about that. So when they say place, you start thinking of different places, whether it could be a city or a, a specific location, whatever it might be. Well, she didn't get the puzzle right. The answer was gravel walkway. And people were losing their minds on social media and, and uh, you know, blasting Wheel of Fortune, arguing that a gravel walkway is not a place, that it's a thing. And I've, I've never really thought about that. It's like... Uh, the categories that they give you, you start thinking your mind goes in one direction. Is a gravel walkway a place or a thing? Because to me, it's a thing. And that seems a little shady. Seems a little shady. If they tell you it's one category and then it's maybe something else, isn't that uh, isn't that shady? I think it might be. It's the Evening Edge with Todd Holst. Call Todd now, 937-457-1290, or message him at Evening Edge Todd. Locally grown, seriously funny on WHIO. All righty. Hey, everybody. Hey, Leslie from work. Hope you're having a good night at work. Hi, Heather. Hey, Kim. Clinton, thank you for the uh, story, by the way. I gave you a little shout out. Hope you heard it. Hey, Mary Beth. Yes. Happy Friday. I am ready for uh, ready for the weekend. You know, it's funny. We had a meeting here today. We had a promotions meeting. And we were talking about how the eclipse, which was just this past Monday, of course, as everyone knows, 
seems like it was forever ago. It seems like it was such a, a gigantic buildup, not just from our, for our, from our aspect where we were promoting it and we were doing this big party and all, you know, whatever. But it seems like everybody was just like, oh, it's coming. Oh, it's coming. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. And woo, that's great. And then like at 3.30, it's like, okay, well, it's over. It was just this tremendous sort of... roller coaster down to the bottom of the hill. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh yeah, that's right. You're right, Heather. Thought that was kind of interesting last night. And I loved the term of, uh, that they used for the, for the ghosts attaching themselves uh, to one person and then removing themselves to another. I thought that was hysterical. Jerked off. That jerked. Not jacked. Jerked. <laughs> they jerked themselves off onto another person. That was hysterical. Oh, wow. <laughs> Where'd it go? Ropple. 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 There you go. There's your grapple. Enjoy your grapple. I don't think we're going to have any grapple tonight. I hope not. No grapple. 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 I'm going to the ballet tomorrow night, and I'm excited about it.
I don't know about Humphrey Bogart. Um, I mean, I know his voice and I can hear his voice in my head, but I'm. He kind of he almost talked like he he was gritting the back teeth in his mouth, you know. Oh, I got to tell you, man, you know, no, I can't. I'm not sure I can. I could work on it. <laughs> Turn your man card in. What did I do? Oh, because I'm going to see the ballet. Nah. I used to be the vice president of the Dayton Ballet Bar. Hey, Josh, how you doing? My name, Mr. More child porn arrests, this time in Dayton. We'll have that for you at 5.30. Now back to the Evening Edge with Todd Halst on 1290 at 95.7 WHIO. Get a lot of this guy. <laughs> the Evening Edge with Todd Holst. Call Todd now, 937-457-1290. Or message him at Evening Edge Todd. Locally grown, seriously funny on WHIO. Back here on the Evening Edge, Monday through Friday, 5 to 7. 937-457-1290. I thought we'd get calls about the uh, the cell phone issue, but uh, no. But we do have a call about the Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> hey, Sherry and Lima. What's up, Sherry? Hi. Um, so I've been watching Jeopardy since it was born. How about and there we, was a man in, how about, in 10 years before Pat and Dana. Uh, you mean Wheel of Fortune. You, you just said Jeopardy. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. That's okay. Wheel of Fortune. Yes, and and also the thing category has always been varied. It could be a state, a city, um, your backyard, the Grand Canyon. And the way I look at it is, if you say, build me a walkway, you're asking for a thing. Right. If you say, meet me at the walkway, you're telling them a location or a place. Well, that so makes sense. Of- that makes sense. But the but the answer was gravel walkway. Yeah. So to me, that's a well, thing, the, right? The place is the walkway. But it could be seen anyway. It's your personal interpretation. Yeah, I know. But that just seems shady when you're playing a game show. You know, people rely it, on it, clues it, like that to sort of be somewhat consistent, not a little tricky. Yeah, but it's yeah. always been that way. And yeah. that's what makes it a game. That's what keeps you guessing. I suppose. You have- I suppose. All right, Sherry. I appreciate your uh, your call. All right. All right. Have Bye-bye. a good one. Yep. That line's open, 937-457-1290. It's the Evening Edge with Todd Holst. Call Todd now, 937-457-1290, or message him at Evening Edge Todd. Locally grown, seriously funny, on WHIO. <laughs> it's ballet bar as in B-A-R-R-E. It's the bar that the ballet dancers hold on to when they're doing their training. That's called the ballet bar. That's called a ballet bar. Not a ballet bar like, hey, give me a shot of twinkle toes or something. <laughs>
<laughs> exactly. I totally get that, Joe. I totally get that. Imagine uh, ballet dancers in their uh, costumes, their ballet tights, their ballet shoes, their uh, ballet uh, unitards, and, uh, you know, they're leaning on the bar. Hey, give me a whiskey sour. <laughs> I won't be wearing a tutu. Not uh not at least where you could see it. I'm going to be uh, drawing the winners this weekend. Uh, the contest ends tonight at midnight. I'm going to mention that here in a minute, in fact. You know what, Sharon? We haven't been to Menards in a while. I don't know what happened. Maybe we maxed the credit card. I don't know. Dee 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 dee.
if news breaks. We break in any time. Now back to America's most powerful talk lineup. W-H-I-O. Don't hesitate to call. You call me. You better call me. Damn it, get me a phone. Call me on my radio. I'm going to call you. You got him on the radio. You won't make a simple phone call. What is wrong with you? It's the Evening Edge with Todd Holst. Call me at 457-1290. Locally grown, seriously funny on W-H-I-O. Back here on the Evening Edge, Monday through Friday, 5 to 7. We got the Facebook and YouTube and Twitch live stream up and running. You've got about uh, six and a half hours to register to win one of the few remaining I Got Moon with the Evening Edge t-shirts from our Big Eclipse show on Monday. We've got a handful left, and uh, the registration ends tonight at midnight. Go to whio.com. Click on the little hamburger menu, go to radio contest, and you'll find it there. Or, more simply, just go to my Facebook page, and you'll find it there pinned to the top. Uh, Joining me on the phone now, I have a guest. I don't normally have uh, guests, and I normally uh, don't have authors on. Uh, but I've got a, uh, an author by the name of Mark Bohack. Now, Mark, how are you doing? All right, Pat, how are you doing? I'm doing well. So Mark contacted me, I think it was last year, like late last yeah. year. And, uh, the reason that, that I made the exception, Mark, just for you, uh, to have an author on the show is because Mark is originally from Centerville and he's written this book about growing up in the Dayton area during the eighties. And I thought, now, wait a second. I can connect with this because I grew up in the Dayton area during the eighties. And, uh, I want to get his perspective on this. Plus he's got a book signing tomorrow at Harrigan's and Karen and Kettering. So Mark, why don't you, first of all, how you doing? I'm glad you're on the show. Finally, it's been uh, many months in the making. Well, thanks for having me on, Todd. Uh, yeah, I came into town yesterday, and uh, I'm hanging out with all my friends, uh, many of whom are, I've got characters that are based on them in the book. So you can imagine it was a pretty fun reunion. Oh, sh- sure, sure. So tell us, uh, let's see, the name of the book, A Bullet in the Head and an Arrow Through the Heart. It, that's correct. Now, that is an interesting uh, title for a book about growing up in Dayton in the 80s. Why don't yeah. you uh, give us some background on that? Sure. On the title itself. Well, my grandfather, crusty old guy, way back when, rest mm-hmm. his soul, um, he said that a man should be shot in the head when he turns 25 years old because his best years are behind him. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> wow. You know, you can look at it that way. Actually, I guess you could. <laughs> yeah, the, the hero in the book, um, actually me, uh, that, you know, my, my memoir is kind of bet, based on, a novel based on a memoir. Mm-hmm. Um, this central character is literally, not I shouldn't say literally, he's figuratively shot in the head early on in a relationship you know, he thinks it's the end of the world. Oh, but yeah, yeah. The moral of the story here is if you soldier on through it with the help of great friendships, um, you know, surrounding you, that you're going to get you're going to get hit again. You're going to get shot again, but you're going to get a shot of, of an arrow through the heart. It, it's going to be nothing but good memories when you look back. And that's kind of what the book is based on. It's a coming of age story. Right. Um, it's a study of the behavior of young men through their relationships with women and their enduring friendship with one another. So it's kind of a coming of age late story. Right. Right. But it's set in a world right here in Dayton, um, largely of, you know, the bar scene in the 1980s. Those of you out there who remember that, who went through that places like Harrigan's where much of the story takes place. Oh, so that, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. A world of distance runners, psychics, tattoo artists, hillbillies, pit bulls, road (laughs) trippers. Wow. There's, there's a love relationship in there too. Yeah. Love gone on relationship. So it's kind of like a love letter. In fact, the subtitle of the book is uh, a love letter to the 1980s, but it's a love letter to friendship and to love itself. And it's told in equal parts comedy 
and melancholy. Well, that's uh, that's very interesting. Now, in your book, I mean, what are some of the you mentioned a couple of the bars, but, uh, you know, other locations, uh, different things that take place in Dayton. How is that sort of uh, weaved into your story? Well, it's when you read the book, um, so much of it is based in Centerville mm-hmm. in Kettering. Um, it, it, you're going to see the, the, the street names. You're going to see the bars, the, the restaurants, the schools. All of this is mentioned. I, I went to the University of Dayton. And a lot of it takes place at the University of Dayton as well. And a lot of it, though, Todd, I have to say, it, it's kind of the connecting tissue through all of these locations and everything are the visits we make to the bars. Sure. And, I uh, get that. I understand that. Yeah. The adventures we go through. Wow. And it, it, yeah. it's, a common, it's a common man story um, that the main character is waiting for something big to happen that never really does and he's waiting he he feels he needs to suffer more uh before he can do writing he wants to be a writer but he's out of a job he's out of time he's losing his girlfriend you know that he thinks is everything he's a man yeah yeah (laughs) but he sets out on this journey to discover the things that matter well a lot of us are a mess (laughs) a lot of us are a mess for sure you know and we're just doing the best we can yeah for sure for sure all right well that sounds very interesting now tell me about the uh the book signing tomorrow i mean it's great that you're you're actually able to hold the book signing in a location that plays a prominent part in your in your story uh what time is your uh what time is your book signing tomorrow uh, the book signing at Harrigan's on Marshall Road there in Kettering is uh, at 5 p.m. It goes from 5 to 8 p.m. And then they have a live band afterwards. So that should be fun, too. Now, the interesting thing about this book signing, it's not just me sitting there at a table signing books. It's the main characters of the book. My friends, you know, that these main characters are based yeah. around. Or, <laughs> they're going to sign the books as well. Now, did you so, get yeah, any... Did you get any pushback no. from your friends uh, about uh, including them in your story? Uh, were the names changed to protect the guilty or anything like oh, that? Of course they were. <laughs> of course. It's a novel based on a memoir. Let's yeah. Remember that novel based on a memoir. So some of it's embellished, some of it's changed, some of it's pure fiction. Right. Um, but it, it's, you know, a connecting story. But no, I, I've, I've had nothing but support. Uh, we're all excited for it. I, I like to look at this as I'm representing all of us and our time together, our friendship. Sure. Sure. That's a great gift to give them, you know? Yeah. I hope it is. And they, I think they see it that way and we're all kind of rallying around it. Well, that's great. All right. Well, Mark Bohack, I appreciate you uh, calling the show and telling us about your book and uh, look, go out and see him tomorrow, five to eight at uh, Harrigan's. Um, I've been to Harrigan's a number of times. It's been a while, but uh, that's a pretty cool place to go. I dig it. Yeah. All right, Mark. Well, good luck with your book, and uh, thanks for uh, for calling. Well, thank you, Todd. Take care. There you go, uh, Mark Bohack. And the uh, the book, again, A Bullet in the Head, An Arrow Through the Heart. That's pretty interesting. Uh, 937-457-1290. Uh, we got Terry in Springfield. Hey, Terry, what's up? Hey, Todd. Love your show. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Um uh, I have a neighbor next door who is a school teacher. Okay. Kindergarten. Her daughter is a type 1 diabetic. She wears all them things that diabetics wear. Sure. But anyway, I'm for the teachers having a cell phone because her daughter, whenever her, whenever she needs something, you know, it it, it 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 alerts her mother's phone and her dad's phone or dad. Oh, phone okay. Phone. So they they get a uh, they get some sort of alert that says yes, sir. there's yes, some sir. sort of yes, issue sir. and they need to uh, give their daughter immediate attention. Yes. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. I mean, I understand. You know, a teacher having it and maybe you know the restriction would be, uh, sure, have the phone in case there's an emergency, but no scrolling Facebook. Right, know, or, right. or Instagram uh, or whatever. But, uh, you know, as long as the teachers use it professionally. Right. 
Right. You know, I, I don't have a problem with that. But yeah. uh, anyway, I uh, just wanted to give you my two cents. Well, I appreciate your two cents, Terry. Have a good uh, weekend. Clinton in Piqua. Hey, Clinton. Hey, Todd. How are you, sir? I'm well. What's going on with you tonight? So the the book that's based around Centerville, I actually picked that up because I went to high school in Centerville. So the cell phone issue, when I, when I sent you that, I, I, I thought about it. And cell phone usage, especially when text messaging, was in its infancy when I was in high school. Right. I went to Center. I graduated from Centerville High School in 2007. So, Centerville's had Centerville High School's had cell phone usage in school banned ever since I was in high school. And guess what? We still did. Use your cell phones. <laughs> yep. Every day. Yeah. There's a will. There, there's a will. There's a way. So for me, this is not really an an enforceable an enforceable thing. There's already schools out there that already have it. And guess what? Right. Yeah. Still use the phones. Yeah, I I think it. I, I think sometimes these types of uh, issues uh, are brought up by politicians just to sort of uh, I don't know, um, not incite, but just sort of. It's just it's it's one of those things that they can get behind and make a big deal out of, but really ultimately isn't going to have much impact on anybody. But for some reason, people can become emotional about it. You know what I mean? I get it. Yeah, I get it. And yeah. frankly, if it was, if I felt it was an enforceable thing and it would actually make a difference, I'd be all for it because, quite frankly, I'm with you. I don't think these kids need to be on social media during the school day. I don't think they need to be texting their friends during the school day. But unfortunately. It's, I, I believe it's where there's a will, there's a way that's still going to happen. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. All, All right. right, Clinton, I appreciate your call, buddy, and thanks for the topic yeah. idea. Take care. Uh, 937-457-1290. Uh, I need to, uh, we got... Uh, we interrupt this program to bring you a special bulletin. I don't know if you saw this. Uh, many people who watch this show are going to be shocked. Shocked. The Golden Bachelor, Jerry Turner and his wife of three months that he left or met on that show, The Golden Bachelor, they've announced that they are getting divorced. Who could have seen this coming? Who could have seen this coming? A reality show connection broken after only three months. Uh, apparently the couple was on Good Morning America today. And uh, announced the shocking news to a uh, reporter by the name of Juju Chang. Really, I just did this story because I like the name Juju Chang. And I wanted to say Juju Chang as many times as I could. They told Juju Chang, Juju Chang uh, that uh, they've had a number of heart to heart conversations, looked closely at their situation, their living situation. And came to the conclusion it was probably time for them to dissolve their marriage. And I saw the video of this and Juju Chang, Chang seemed really disappointed. So there you go. If you were a fan of the Golden Bachelor and the Golden Wedding, get ready for the Golden Divorce. What am I listening to now? What is this? The Evening Edge with Todd Holst. It's a radio show. It's entertainment. Double it up. T. O. Double D. H. Oh. Double L. F. T. I can remember that. Locally grown. Seriously funny. I'm puzzled by the whole thing. On WHIO. <laughs> <laughs> the golden baby. <laughs> wow. Oh, okay, Caroline. I was actually uh, scrolling back through and I saw your question. Okay. When and why did you get into radio? I got into radio. Well, let me back up. I fell in love with radio at a very, very young age. Very young age. I'm talking like four or five. There were some people that lived. Excuse me. There were some people that lived at the end of the street that I um, 
uh, lived on at the time when I was, you know, four or five years old. They, uh, there were, I had some friends that lived there. They were about my age, maybe a year or two, uh, older, but you know, we all played, you know, ball in the street and whatever, but they had a couple of older brothers who were in high school, maybe junior high, but they were, they were, they were older and they built a little makeshift radio station in their bedroom. And uh, Mark and Scott Wagner were their names who built it. And then my friends were Darren and Casey. But anyway, um, I remember being in their little studio in their basement and just being mesmerized with all the cool equipment. Now, it wasn't like a real radio station. But they did broadcast illegally, which was <laughs> fun to think about now. They had a little FM transmitter that they uh, broadcast to the neighborhood. But... Um, so that was my first, my first sort of taste. And then my dad got a tape recorder and I would play with the tape recorder and record my voice and he'd interview me. And I've played some of that on the show before. Um, and it was just cool to hear my voice back on tape. Then, then when I was 10 years old, I was in the Cub Scouts and we went on a tour of WING Radio over there in Kettering. Steve Kirk actually gave us the tour. And it was that, at that moment, I was just like, oh, this is just the greatest thing. This is just it, you know. And I always listened to the radio, and I loved the, hearing the voices coming out, and I listened to WHIO. I loved, I loved talk radio, even though a lot of it was over my head because I was a kid, but I just loved listening to the conversation. So uh, when I was about 13 or 14, I had a paper route and I bought a bunch of uh, equipment and created my own little homemade radio studio in my bedroom. And that's what I did for a number of years. And I, too, would broadcast illegally. But, you know, it didn't go much further than the driveway. I think my dad could listen when he was cutting the grass, but that was about it. And, uh, so I, you know, I really wanted to do that. And then, um, I went away to college and I got a job at the college radio station. I still at thought that time thought that trying to be in radio was like trying to be in the movies, that it was just that difficult to get into. Turns out not so difficult. <laughs> so I started working at the campus radio station and really enjoyed it. And then I only lasted at that college for one year and I wasn't a very good student, but I loved working at the radio station. So I came back to Dayton and I enrolled in the international college of broadcasting in 1989. No. Yeah. Yeah. Fall of 89 and, uh, graduated there in 91 and, uh, started working in radio and actually television. My first job was actually at, Fox 45 TV. And then I got a job at wing and, uh, I've sort of been working ever since I had a couple of years where I was out of broadcasting and I was doing, um, marketing for a, uh, advertising company. But, um, this is where I belong and this is where I've always belonged. So I'm happy to be here doing it. That's sort of the, uh, the uh the short version <laughs> of it but uh yeah i've been doing it since i really actually consider it probably 1988 as the first year that i worked in radio because that was the first time i actually cracked the mic on a real licensed radio station so 1988 maybe early night 89 can't remember when I started working at the campus station. I think it was before Christmas, so it would have been 88. So I've been doing it a very, very long time. Oh, I love it. I love it. I plan on doing this for the rest of my life. I don't plan on retiring. I will be doing something like this for the rest of my life, for sure.
Oh, nothing happened, Jen. Nothing, nothing happened. Oh, it's all good. Caroline was just asking me uh, how I got into radio. All good. Oh, Kelly, thank you so much. That's awesome. Thank you. That is awesome. And WHIO FM, Pleasant Hill. Tax returns are due Monday. We'll have the latest at 6. Now back to the Evening Edge with Todd Hulst, 1290-957 WHIO. This guy was smart, sophisticated, professional. I mean, really, really great. The Evening Edge with Todd Hulst. Call Todd now, 937-457-1290. Or message him at Evening Edge Todd. Locally grown, seriously funny on WHIO. Back here on the Evening Edge, Monday through Friday, 5 to 7. Big shout out to Edgehead Kelly. That is uh, Liam's mom. Liam is the official, unofficial mascot of the Evening Edge. She just commented. This is so sweet. We talked about that uh, book box that got robbed the other day. There in Riverside, she uh, dropped off three bags of books today. So they can replenish their book box. That's sweet. Uh, 937-457-1290. I, uh, I saw the oddest thing um, coming into the uh, station yesterday. And I didn't get a chance to talk about this last night. And I don't know if this is a thing. I asked my wife and she wasn't sure. She'd never done it. We were driving down Patterson and there was a, a woman, a young woman. Um, I think she was by uh, whatever that coffee shop is. It's right next to the uh, what old scratch pizza. I forget what that's called. I've been there, but I, I don't remember what the name of it is. But either way, uh, she had the trunk of her car open. OK, and it was it was raining. And she was trying to stick the umbrella into the trunk, but the umbrella was still open. And it was a good size umbrella. And I said, I said to Mary, because we were stopped at the stoplight, I said, are you seeing that? Why is she trying to stick an open umbrella in her trunk? Now, when I've come in from uh, the rain here at the building, and if I have an umbrella, I will often close the umbrella, bring it inside and open it up and leave it, you know, in the lobby down by the guard's desk. So it dries off. I don't want the water all over the place. But I said, is that a thing? Like, does, do people dry their, <laughs> dry their umbrella off in the trunk of their car and driver? I've never seen that before. I mean, I know opening, they say an umbrella inside is bad luck, but I don't know if there's, a saying about opening it and putting putting it in a trunk. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I I couldn't understand why she was doing that. The other thought I had was maybe she couldn't close it. Like there was a problem. She couldn't figure out how to close it. I've been stymied by an umbrella before. Uh, what am I listening to now? What is this? The Evening Edge with Todd Holst. It's a radio show. It's entertainment. Fill it up. Oh. T. Oh. Double D. H. Oh. Double L. S. S. T. I can remember that. Locally grown, seriously funny. I'm puzzled by the whole thing. On WHIO. Twin <laughs> sister station Dayton turns to first for live team coverage of breaking news. WHIO Dayton Springfield. Your news starts now. Depend on it. It's 6 o'clock. I'm Ron Otto, live from the WHIO News Center with our top local story. A Clark County man is accused of shooting and killing an Uber driver. Looking ahead to Saturday, a beautiful weather day is on tap with plenty of sunshine. I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Cheney. My forecast is coming up. This traffic report is sponsored by Grismer Tire and Auto Service. Buy any four tires and get four free oil changes at Grismer Tire and Auto Service. See store for details. Let's go now with William Reed. Major slowdown. <laughs> no, it wasn't Gabby. <laughs> I 
Mm. Yeah, Josh, I'm watching the uh, video of the shooting in Clark County. Uh, I... What a crazy story. Just one of these people out there that that own a weapon who I I mean I don't mean to sound inflammatory that's not my not my uh my intention but you know there are people out there that have weapons who are just itching itching to uh to shoot somebody I I'm convinced of it they just look for they that you know they look for for any reason to uh to pull the trigger I mean if you see this video that woman was no threat to him no threat at all she was walking away from him trying to get away cuz he had a gun on her Oh, just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Makes no sense. Yes, Caroline, I grew up in uh, Beaver Creek. I was born in Cincinnati. Well, Hamilton County, but northern Cincinnati. I was born in a... Uh, <coughs> I was born in a um, Salvation Army Hospital. And then I was adopted and uh, grew up in Beaver Creek. Forty-one degrees tonight. So I'm going to have to wear pants to bed.
end on it. If news breaks, we break in any time. Now back to America's most powerful talk lineup, WHIO. And now the moment we've been waiting for is here. Hey, I'm here for the big show. This guy, Todd, did he make you laugh? He's funny. Yes, he is sometimes. It's kind of a big show. Okay, boys. It's the Evening Edge with Todd Holst. Call me now, 937-457-1290. Locally grown, seriously funny on WHIM. It is the Evening Edge, Monday through Friday, 5 to 7. Got the live stream up and running. Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Got about 30 people watching right now. That's pretty good for a Friday night. Last night, at one point, I think we had over 40. Maybe we can get to 50. You know, a lot of people who've been watching and listening for a while remember that I uh, I made the promise that if we eclipsed 100 viewers on the live stream one night I would take my shirt off and sadly I don't know if it was sadly happily we didn't make it for some people maybe it was sad but uh, we 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 fell short by about uh, I don't know seven or eight but uh, anyway Uh, you can also email me we have uh, email coming up mail call uh, at eveningedgetodd at gmail.com or you can send me a message on social media at Evening Edge Todd. So uh, every year this uh, this list comes out, and I uh, I always enjoy uh, bringing it up because I, like many of you, uh, have pets. I love my pets. We have uh, we have Luna, who is very shy, doesn't like uh, to to show off. And then there's Lily. This is Lily. Um, she she's a she's a big uh, show off. Uh, but admittedly, they don't have very creative names. Luna and Lily. There's a lot of Lunas and Lilies in the world. And uh, they candidly are named uh, after a couple of characters in Harry Potter. My wife is a big Harry Potter fan, and they're named after those characters. Uh, but uh, every year, Nationwide Insurance, they do this contest where they try to come up, uh, they try to find the wackiest pet names in America. And I love going through these lists because I wonder these these folks that name their animals these unusual names. If when the dog does something naughty or the cat or whatever, the, the there's also an exotic uh, pet category that they have some strange names. Like, uh, you know, when if, if if Luna or Lily does something at, in the house and they, they you know, g- get into the toilet paper or they get into, uh, you know, headphones or they get into underwear, whatever it is, you know, usually it's a, it's a very quick Lily, stop it. That kind of thing. But what if your what if your uh, dog's name is one love tiny dancer princess? It's a mouthful, right? Well, nationwide, they've uh, they've come up with uh, they've they found a bunch of wacky names, and they've narrowed the finalists down. And I thought I would go through these. And if you happen to have, and I want to invite you, if you have a uh, a, a wacky pet name, by all means, I want to hear it uh, and see how it compares to some of these. So, uh, dog finalists, uh, these are the the dog finalists. We've got uh, boots with the fur. Chug Chug Pickles, Little Richard Simmons sweating to the oldies, <laughs> Lord Waddles, Lulu the Conqueror, Molly from Corporate, Mr. Pizza Puff, the aforementioned One Love Tiny Dancer Princess, Margaret Rose Windsor, Team the Bandit, and the News. So those are the wackiest dog names uh, on the list. Uh, kind of interesting. I actually, like, as much as uh, I know there are people that would think I would choose the Richard Simmons one because of my uh, my history with Richard Simmons. 
Uh, I'm not. I uh, I like Molly from corporate. That's a good one. Uh, now, here are the cat names. The cat names that are up for wackiest cat names. Uh, we have Balsamic Vin. Not vinegar. Vin. Car Alarm. Itty Bitty Committee. Or, I'm sorry, Itty Bitty Kitty Committee. Now, I like that one, but that, too, would be a mouthful. Uh, meow nays. Minerva Meow Gonagal. See, from Harry Potter. Yeah. Now, this one, I don't know what it is. Necronomicat. Necronomicat? That's stupid. <laughs> Samsung Family Hub reg uh, Refrigerator. That's my favorite. And I saw a picture about the size of a refrigerator, that cat. Uh, Skull crush, uh, Crusher. I like this one. Steph Puri. Purry. Stir, not Puri. Purry. Steph Purry. And then the last one on uh, the list of finalists. Tony Scarface Baloney. Yeah. I like uh, Samsung Family Hub Refrigerator. That's my pick. Now we get to the exotic animal list. And uh, this one uh, is a bunny. His name is, uh, or I guess it, her, I don't know. Beazel Bun. Uh, there's a ferret named Boo Boo Bean. Somebody in Ohio is on the finalist list with their snake called Boo Noodle. Is that right? Boo, oh, I'm sorry. Boop Noodle. Boop Noodle. There's a guinea pig named Cow Pig. <laughs> a lizard named Frosted Mini Wheats. A macaw named Magic Nugget. My favorite is this tortoise. It's from Texas. And the name of the tortoise is Midsize Sedan. Uh, somebody in North Carolina has a ferret named Mumbo Jumbo. A Florida man, I'm guessing, has a pig named Snoop Hoggy Hog. That's quality. I like that. And then uh, a rabbit. <laughs> Thor Odin Bun, God of Bunder. People are creative, I'll tell you. We got uh, some people on the uh, live stream. We've got uh, Jackie says her cat's name is Karen Elizabeth. <laughs> like that just Karen Elizabeth get in here uh there's CC Bloom that's a good one uh I can't say that one <laughs> can't say that one Josh sorry but uh if you've got uh if you've got a crazy uh pet name uh, that you want to share by all means 937 457 1290. We've got some mail. Shut back down and shut your trap. It's time for mail call. Message for you, son. You should see a fan mail. You got a message. I got you, lad. Amazing what you can accomplish by mail. Congratulations, Skippy. You've got mail. By the way, if we have time, uh, just after 630, I'm going to introduce a new feature called Be Careful Where You Stick That. So be uh, be listening for that. Uh, if you'd like to email me, again, the email is eveningedgetodd at gmail.com. Hey, Todd, I have an idiot for or idiot of the week for you. Okay, let's hit our idiot open you here. stupid, stupid idiot. I'm from upbringing. Parents are probably idiots, too. Idiot, David Tyler King. Wake up, idiot. Silly Billy Dokio. I'm an idiot. Yeah, that's true. I have an idiot of the week for you. I saw that on Monday. A woman on the TV show The View commented that she believed that earthquakes, cicadas, and the eclipse may be caused by climate change or possibly God. <laughs> I usually don't pay attention to what these talking heads say, but this woman is supposedly a lawyer. You'd think that someone with a law degree would have some understanding of science. What an idiot. Carrie in Beaver Creek. Uh, I don't watch The View. The few times that I've seen it, they make my head hurt. 
So I don't pay much attention to uh, anybody on there. I know there's that uh, Whoopi's on there and uh, Joy Behar. Is that her name? But that's those are the only two people I know. But they've been on it forever. But the woman that this uh, that Carrie in Beaver Creek is talking about is someone by the name of Sunny Hostin. I've never heard of her. But apparently she's an attorney and a TV host on that show. And here's the clip. This is <laughs> this is funny. We've got a solar eclipse. We've got the earthquake. The and then also I learned that the cicadas are coming. Cicadas. Cicada. First of all, cicadas. Is music artist John Cicada going to be <laughs> emerging from uh, three feet under the ground? Cicadas? It is oh, for the yes. first time in, in many, many years. No, seven, so, every 17 years this happens. Well, that's not what I read, but maybe, <laughs> but, you know, maybe well, you know better. All those things together would maybe lead one to believe that, you know, either climate change what? exists that's <laughs> or something point. is really or something going on. Oh, wow. That is something else. The climate change or God somehow has caused the cicadas <laughs> to emerge uh, every 17 years, or in her mind, the first time in thousands of years. And the eclipse, we've had a billion plus eclipses. We have. And of course, the earthquakes, which clearly. Not climate change. Wow. There's some bright people. Uh, hey, Todd, don't know if you fish, but I thought you'd like to see this. This girl caught this fish in the Ohio River. Dennis in Springfield. Uh, I don't fish, but this is crazy. I'm going to try to share this. 15-year-old girl uh, from New Richmond pulled a 101-pound catfish. Out of a, uh, it says, uh, backwaters of the Ohio River on Sunday. Man, that is a lot of catfish there. I'll see if I can find the story and uh, share it. Because if you're a fisherman or a fisher gal, you might want to check it out. It's the Evening Edge with Todd Holst. Call Todd now, 937-457-1290. Or message him at Evening Edge Todd. Locally grown, seriously funny on WHIO. Look at this fish. It's 
crazy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I thought I thought what you typed was the name of a cat or a dog. <laughs> oh well, that's funny. Ghost light. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Susie. I've been there. I've been there one time and it was a number of years ago. It was before the pandemic. But I just couldn't remember the name of it. Uh, Caroline, um, I would say there's been a lot, but probably the thing that I was most proud of was, and I don't do it anymore. <laughs> I only did it for a year and, it, and that was by, uh, that was intentional, but I, um, for about a year, I hosted a syndicated show on Sunday nights. I did essentially my show on um, a number of Cox radio stations, not syndicated in the strictest sense, but I, uh, on Sunday nights, you could hear me in Dayton. You could hear me in Tulsa. You could hear me in Jacksonville and you could hear me in Atlanta on WSB. And that was probably the coolest thing that I've been able to do because that was a goal that I had early on was to try to do a syndicated show. But I only did it for a year. I was still doing my show Monday through Friday, and I was doing a Sunday night show. So I basically was working like six days, seven days a week. Old Scratch is next to Ghost Light. <laughs> Coffee. It's down on Patterson. The House casts votes on FISA. We'll have the latest at 6.30. Now back to the Evening Edge with Todd Halst on 1290 and 95.7 WHIO. You got to tune in, man. You got to tune in. The Evening Edge with Todd Holst. Call Todd now, 937-457-1290 or message him at Evening Edge Todd. Locally grown, seriously funny on WHIO. Back here on the Evening Edge, Monday through Friday, 5 to 7. You still have about five and a half hours to register to win one of the few remaining I Got Moon with the Evening Edge t-shirts from our Big Eclipse show on Monday. The uh, registration ends at midnight tonight, and you can register on my Facebook page. There's a link that will take you to the registration page, or you can go to whio.com, click on the uh, hamburger menu, Scroll down or, you know, zip down to where it says radio contests and click on that page and you can uh, find it that way. It's much easier to, though, to go to my uh, Facebook page and then give me a follow while you're there. I'd appreciate that. 937-457-1290. John in Urbana. Hey, John. How are you? I'm doing well. You got a wacky animal name? Well, yeah, I got a turtle I found walking across my driveway and let, figured I'd keep him so that he didn't get killed or run over. And I decided I'd call him Mitch McTurtle. Mitch McTurtle. <laughs> I'll 
I like that. That's it's easy to uh, it kind of rolls off your tongue. There's some alliteration there. Not well, bad. And it's also in honor in honor of a certain senator that they call the turtle. Ah, okay. Well, that makes sense. He's about ready to crawl back into a shell, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, John, I appreciate it. Thank you. That line's open, 937-457-1290. We have some breaking the law news. Breaking the law, breaking the law, breaking the law, breaking the law. Uh, I bring this up because my wife actually witnessed this. She witnessed an arrest uh, the other day at the Burger King down on Brown Street. Now, Here's here's the thing that makes this uh, it's not it's not funny, but it's entertaining to me only because the guy that got arrested uh, apparently he uh, he went to the Burger King and let's see his name is Donald K K Hall or Cahal or whatever K Hall he's twenty years old he went in there early in the day asking for free food he wanted free food and he told the manager on duty that he should be given free food because, ready for this, he's a social media influencer. <laughs> and she said, get the hell out of here. So he stormed off, but he came back later. And this time he ripped off his shirt, went into the store, started demanding free food again, but then he became violent and attacked the manager on duty. Well, the cops were called. They showed up and uh, they arrested the guy. And my wife saw that. She was like, I saw somebody get arrested at the Burger King. What's that about? And I'm like, well, I'm surprised you didn't notice or recognize him. He's a big time social media influencer. <laughs> man, oh, man. But yeah, he was uh, he was arrested, and uh, his picture's on whio.com. What am I listening to now? What is this? The Evening Edge with Todd Holst. It's a radio show. It's entertainment. Coming up. T-O. Oh. Double D. H. Oh. Double L. S. T. I can remember that. Locally grown. Seriously funny. I'm puzzled by the whole thing. On WHIO. Yeah, I think that's true, Susie. I think uh, cell phones have uh, made people um, unsocialized. Does that make if that makes sense? I think we've all reversed. I think many of us have reversed course. Meow sickles. Yeah, Cal, I just saw that story. The truck. 
Yeah, semi uh, stolen semi truck crashes into a government building. Colleen sent me a uh, text. She says that some friends of hers have uh, two main Maine Coon, Man Coon, Maine Coon, Man Coon. I think they're Man Coons. Cats. One is named uh, Mortifer Murder Mittens, and the other is Richard Cordelion. Ma Maine Coon? Okay, I guess it is Maine Coon. Maine Coon, okay. Mortifer, Murder Mittens, and Richard Cordelion. Cordelion. Wow. She also saw a chocolate lab at a vet not long ago, and the name was Count Chocula. That's funny. I think a, a Maine Coon cat would probably scare our two dogs. <laughs> I, I don't know that they would do well. The cat would be bigger than the dogs. Dumb, dumber, and a little dumb. I like that. I sometimes refer to Lily and Luna as dumb and dumber. Which is weak. Or morons. News breaks. We break in any time. Now back to America's most powerful talk lineup. W-H-I-O. Don't give me that politics, Jazz. It's not my racket. People are tired of hearing nothing but doom and despair on the radio. Everyone just relax, all right? The problems of the world are not in my department. No, who is like a cookie? It's the Evening Edge with Todd Holst. Call me at 457-1290. Locally grown, seriously funny on W-H-I-O. Back here on the Evening Edge, Monday through Friday, 5 to 7. Did you have a bad day at work today? How does it compare to this? There's a uh, woman in Kansas, Leavenworth, Kansas. I've been there, by the way. I didn't do time there. I was visiting somebody. They weren't doing time either at the military jail. Uh, there's a woman in uh, Leavenworth who works at a bakery called uh, Sis of Sweets Cookies and Cafe. 
And she's asking customers to eat their cookies carefully because somewhere in the cookie dough is a $4,000 diamond from her ring. Ooh. That's, uh, that sucks, man. Holy cow. I mean, there's always the chance that somebody's going to see it or maybe bite into it, break a tooth, then you get sued, but you get your diamond back, right? Or they won't notice it, and it gets flushed away. But uh, that's a bad day for sure. 937-457-1290. Robin and Gratis. What's going on, Robin? Hey, I just wanted to say something about the guy who found the turtle. Yeah, I know where you're going with this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't have kept it as a pet. You got, you kind of got to let them go their way, you know? Yeah. You're supposed to help them across yeah. the road, right. the direction they were going. It's illegal to take them. It's kind of kidnapping of a turtle. Nobody wants to live in a tank. Turtle napping. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I That's almost said something. Nice. I almost said something, but I, uh, I just figured well, I'll just move on. You know, I didn't yeah. want to get into yeah, a I'm debate over it. Person. Right. Yeah, yeah. All right, Robin. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. yep. Have a good one. Uh, that line's open, 937-457-1290. Uh, all right. So um, we're going to give this a try. This is a new feature. And every once in a while, I'll get a story about somebody who, for some reason, decides to put something in an orifice of theirs. Lots of times it's a kid, right? Lots of times it's a little kid. I mean, I uh, I had to go to the uh, ER when I was little to have peas removed from my nose. I had to have a uh, caramel wrapper removed from my ear. You know, it's kids do stupid things, but so do adults. So do adults. So uh, I got another one of these stories. And then I found a couple more. So this is a new feature that uh, will come up from time to time called Be Careful Where You Stick That. Be careful where you stick that. What's in your mouth? Got a coin in your ear. It's stuck. I think I'm safe. It's wasting day pretty time. Better watch where you stick that. It's going to hurt. It's deep in there. we got to get to the hospital. <clears throat> so a uh, 14-year-old uh, California teenager had to be hospitalized after swallowing a quarter. A mouth is an orifice. You don't put money in there. I also did that. It was a dime. I think it was a dime. That's what my mom says. It was either a dime or a nickel. And for uh, weeks and weeks and weeks, they were searching. You know what I mean? Uh, the unnamed 14-year-old uh, reported to the hospital complaining of hoarseness and swelling problems, swallowing problems six hours after accidentally consuming a 25-cent piece. Doctors were perplexed as the human piggy bank <laughs> didn't display any breathing problems normally associated with ingesting coins. I mean, that could get caught in your esophagus, and then it causes you to struggle to breathe. Uh, hoping to get to the root of the issue, they x-rayed his chest, which showed the quarter was situated vertically in the subglottis. That is the area between the vocal cords and the trachea. Maybe that's what I meant. I didn't mean esophagus. I meant trachea. Uh, which allowed air to pass through despite causing him discomfort. And I, they show a picture of it, and uh, it looks like he you know, like he was putting a quarter into a slot and it's just stuck right there in the middle. Uh, the boy was uh, fortunate since in most cases of accidental aspiration, Ford objects lodged themselves in the trachea or other parts of the throat and potentially jeopardize a patient's breathing. Doctors put the boy under general anesthesia and removed the quarter. Uh, that, uh, that allowed him to, uh, allowed them to extract the coin with a flexible for, uh, forceps and removed it with minimal damage. Now, here's the question. Does he get to keep the quarter? Or would he want to keep the quarter? I think a 14-year-old probably would. I mean, a 14-year-old, you know, your middle school, junior high, high school, 
I'm guessing they don't have show and tell in, in, in class, you know, but boy, oh boy, at the lunchroom, guess where this corner was. Uh, according to Harvard Health, coins are the most uh, inedible objects swallowed by children, accounting for more than 60% of cases in which children sought medical care after uh, aspirating a foreign object. So coins, that's where all the money's going. Kids are eating it. Uh, here's a story. This is, uh, again, and I don't know that this guy stuck this there, but explain to me how he did, how this happened otherwise. A Vietnamese man had a live eel surgically removed from his abdomen, and doctors believe it slid up his rear. The stomach-turning uh, turning discovery was made when an unidentified 34-year-old man went to the uh, Heha District Medical Center in Quang Ninh Province with severe abdominal pain this past March. Doctors believe the sea creature entered the man's body through his rear and slid through his into his colon. Now, how does that accidentally happen? Can anybody explain that? How does that accidentally happen? Uh, the eel was found after doctors performed an ultrasound, an x-ray, which showed a foreign object was inside the man's digestive tract. The eel caused intestinal perforations and a uh, condition that, or parent, parentontid, parentontis, per, you know what I'm saying. Maybe you don't. P-E-R-I-T-O-N-I-T-I-S. A condition that causes inflammation in the stomach or abdomen. Uh, the man was kept in the hospital after the surgery and reported having mild abdominal pain after waking up. And then our third one. A man from Taiwan, 56-year-old man, had surgery to remove a coconut. The constipated 56-year-old man who wasn't identified waited two days before seeking medical attention. Writing in the British Journal of Surgery, medics claimed that he had been unable to relieve himself and complained of se severe abdominal pain. Upon examination, scans showed the fruit was lodged in his rear, compressing his urethra and preventing him from peeing. The coconut measured nine centimeters in length. Coconut. A coconut. We have a Florida man story. Oh, Florida man shines with every single crime. Stupefying and delicious. Some might even think fictitious. Florida man is always ambitious. Like the kid in the corner. Quarter. Did he keep the coconut? Souvenir? Put it up there on the mantle? For posterity? Uh, Florida man, Winter Springs, Florida man, 73-year-old guy was taken to jail after he allegedly pulled a knife on a kid who was riding his bicycle on the sidewalk. Uh, this past Monday, cops responded to a disturbance about a man who was waving a military-style knife at the child. Uh, cops spoke to the kid at his house, told him he was riding his bike home. When the man stopped him, became angry. He was riding on the sidewalk and not, not the bike lane. Uh, I don't know how old the kid is. I will say, and not that I would ever, you know, draw a knife or a gun or anything like that on a kid. I would say that if, the, if it was a teenager riding on the sidewalk and there is clearly a bike lane, I'd be like, just riding the bike lane. You're old enough to know how bike laws are, right? I mean, you should be able to handle that at a, at a certain age. If this is like a little kid, who cares? Uh, cops said the child was uh, visibly scared and apologized to the man and then rode his bike home. Cops went to the location and found the man who admitted to his actions, but told him, and this is why this is a great Florida man story, 73-year-old guy, who, by the way, was also carrying a gun, which, fine, you're allowed to do that. But he had the knife, and he waved the knife at the kid. 
He told police he did it because the child on the bike put his life in, ja in danger. <laughs> the man's life was in danger because of a little kid on a bike. He was arrested, charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Cops said he uh, was armed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he said that the child reportedly uh, was reportedly riding the bike right at me. <laughs> wow, these kids on bikes, man. You got to look out for them. Got to look out for them. What am I listening to now? What is this? The Evening Edge with Todd Holst. It's a radio show. It's entertainment. Fill it up. T-O. Oh. Double D. H. Oh. Double L. S. T. I can remember that. Locally grown. Seriously funny. I'm puzzled by the whole thing. On WHIO. <sighs> Hi, Denise. How are you? I'll be right back. I got to run to the printer.
No, it's right here. Printer. Went to the printer. <laughs> I had a story I wanted to mention, and I thought I printed it out, but I didn't. So, Oh, I'm sure he does, Sharon. There's there's some guy, I don't know if he's a doctor, but there's some guy, and I've talked about this on the show before, every year he puts out a uh, a list of like the top 10 things people have had removed from their body. After three days of rain, looking to clear out tonight. Well, the latest at 7 o'clock. Now back to the Evening Edge with Todd Halst on 1290 and 95.7 WHIO. Well, he has quite the reputation. The Evening Edge with Todd Holst. Call Todd now, 937-457-1290. Or message him at Evening Edge Todd. Locally grown, seriously funny on WHIO. <laughs> Back here on the Evening Edge, Monday through Friday, 5 to 7. A couple of weeks ago, I had a story about a guy out at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. William, I don't know if you were working this night, a uh, particular night, but here's the story. The guy won three major jackpots in three hours. Were you working that night? Probably not. No. Uh, on this particular night, he won $125,000 on a slot machine. Then an hour later, won 383500 on a slot machine. And then just after midnight, won $159,250 or $250 on a uh, slot machine. Three huge, huge slot wins. And you would think, well, that's just, how does that even happen? How does that happen? Well, uh, unbelievable run of luck, Right. Why am I bringing it up again? Last Thursday, <laughs> the same guy in the same casino placed a $2,500 bet on a spin and won $692,500. So he won, he wins three big jackpots on slots one night. And then a week later, hits another for $692,500. He's He brought home over a million dollars, of course, before taxes, in uh, just a couple of weeks playing slots. That is unbelievable. I don't think I've ever won anything on a slot machine. I mean, ultimately. It's like you put in a, I remember going on a cruise and they were quarter slots and I'd take a roll of quarters and I just play the quarters. You know, at some point I had like 50 bucks, but I didn't walk away. Oh, no, 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 no. You got to let it ride. And uh, I let it ride <laughs> and it rolled right back into the casino's uh, vault. Have a terrific weekend. I'll be back on Monday just after 5. Don't forget, you can get the podcast of this show at eveningedgetod.com and all your favorite podcast platforms. And you've got until midnight tonight to register to win that I Got Moon with the Evening Edge t-shirt. You can find the link on my Facebook page at Evening Edge Todd. 
Have a terrific night. That's it. I'm out of ideas. He's done. It's over. He's finished. Sorry, buddy. Show's over. Say good night to the bad guy. Now give me a kiss and say good night. Good riddance, you loony. Sister station Dayton turns weekend. to first for live team coverage of breaking news. WHIO.